Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg faced intense questioning after yesterday's spectacle of Bragg going after Trump in New York City. Critics called the case a bank shot because it relies on a stiff backboard of evidence yet to be seen. Americans watched a soft on violent crime DA stretch to link alleged Trump payments to campaign law violations. Bragg was on the defense. We today uphold our solemn responsibility to ensure that everyone stands equal before the law. Your predecessor took a hard look at this case and decided not to charge it. Federal prosecutors took a hard look at this case and decided not to charge it. We have uh, had available to the office additional evidence uh, that was not in the office's possession prior to my time here. Uh, and as to uh, your, your part of your question about the, the federal, we have a distinct and strong, I would say profound, independent interest in New York State. Trump made his return to his home estate in Florida in Mar-a-Lago after his court appearance, his message. I never thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. On Capitol Hill, Republicans are promising to reveal the real reasons behind the indictment with the Judiciary Committee pushing for D.A. Alvin Bragg to testify and explain himself. It's a political scam. They've opened up a can of worms. They've set precedents now that we can't go back on. We're going to start seeing ambitious political people like Alvin Bragg try to make a name for themselves and go after big pie-in-the-sky federal cases. And it's just not a good path that we need to, uh, to, to go forward on in our judiciary. Let's start at the White House, where Peter Ducey is. Peter. Harris, so far, President Biden has not commented, but he has reacted. Diamond, is your predecessor politically divisive? Just a smile. That's all he gave us. The White House does not comment on pending trials, except when they do, like about cases tied to January 6th. We're just going to be very mindful. These are ongoing cases. 100 cases involving Americans Wait, I, who, who, whose freedom I hear, was at, I hear at you, risk. I hear you. Right? But this so, is something that all of Americans watch in real time. In real time. And people people died. People died. People died. But you're lecturing me. But, but, but you're I'm, lecturing I'm me. Not, yes, you I'm, are. I'm asking questions. The administration would prefer to talk about their agenda and how they think their plans are helping the country. And it's unclear if that's going to change. All that anybody in the country is talking about at this exact moment while we're in here is Trump. And they look here to find out what the White House thinks about it. And... Well... I think the American people should feel reassured that when there is an ongoing case like this one, that we're just not commenting. For now, no chance for President Biden to comment today. No public events on the schedule. Harris? Peter Ducey, thank you very much. A breakdown of what exactly is in the unsealed indictment. 34 felony charges of falsifying business records. Technically, when you read it, it's like one charge repeated over and over and over and over and over. It includes claims of a catch-and-kill scheme to tamp down bad press ahead of the 2016 election. Alleged payments, $30,000 to a doorman, $150,000 to a former Playboy model, Karen McDougal, and a payment to Stormy Daniels. All together, Trump faces a maximum of 136 years in prison because of the number of charges. But again, a lot of repetition in there. Republican Senator Mitt Romney, clearly an outspoken critic, not a fan of the former president, but he says no one is above the law. But the prosecutor's overreach sets a dangerous precedent for criminalizing political opponents and damages the public's faith in our justice system. In focus now, Leo Terrell, attorney and Fox News contributor. Leo, thanks for being with me. Let's start there. What did the American people experience yesterday, and, and what's the problem with how it was laid out for them? 
Well, they saw, thank you for having me, Harris. They saw a uh, district attorney place his political ambition over the rule of law. We saw a, a, our legal system being basically challenged and damaged. And Harris, you saw political legal pundits from across the left and right criticizing the weakness of this. This is not a case. This is a political persecution. And by the way, Joe Biden, who was smiling, he's a prosecutor. He's a former prosecutor. He's a lawyer. He knows better. Our national governmental legal system is at issue, and everyone is fair game now. Um, you know, let's talk about the timing of it all. It's something I've been focused on for about a week and a half now. District Attorney Alvin Bragg's case coming out just at this time. The Wall Street Journal editorial board points this out. Some news reports say Trump's next court appearance is probably on the docket for December, only about a month or two before the Iowa caucus, seven years after the alleged misconduct. So an elected Democrat DA has indicted Trump in a case that could finally come to resolution right in the middle of the 2024 primaries. Andy McCarthy out with a new op-ed today, and it again points to the political motive in all of this. The quote, for the left, putting Trump through a painful prosecution is the point. Leo. Absolutely correct. Karis, what is the end game? Will this prosecution stop Donald Trump from running for president? Answer, no. All you got to do is look at the Constitution. The requirements are very basic. He's going to run, but it's a distraction. It's a distraction from the failed policies of President Biden. That's the end game. It is to distract the American public from what is going on in this country. We had an election in Chicago, in Wisconsin. We had a new NATO member. We have inflation. We have all this chaos. We have a disastrous administration under the Biden administration. This is designed to take the American public eyeballs off of the failed policies of the Biden administration. Well, I don't know if you watched the former president last night when he got back to his home in Mar-a-Lago, but he hit everything that you just said. He also did something else that I want to ask you about just legally. He laid out what potential other cases could be coming toward him and the weaknesses of those cases. Did you think that was compelling from him? And did you think it was necessary for him to do? The audience, of course, loved him. Th those are people in the room who love him. But I saw people standing up and leaning in physically and listening to know, OK, what's coming? Harris, what's coming, and the president, and I saw the uh, speech last night he gave, what's coming is this president is being hit by all flanks of all these anticipated charges filed against him, the one in Georgia possible, the Mar-a-Lago situation, the January 6th. Most of these prosecutions are going nowhere, Harris, but when you look at the big picture, the Democrats have a very sound playbook, distract the American public off of the ills of the Biden administration, focused on attacking President Trump and basically wasting his resources, time, and energy. It is, to me, it is a weaponization of the legal system. I take a great amount of pride being a lawyer for over 30 years mm. to respect the law. Right now, the Democrats and Alvin Bragg do not respect the law. Well, I can tell you, millions of Americans last night watched it the old-fashioned way, not from Mar-a-Lago, but from their own home dining room and kitchen tables where the price of food is so high it could almost choke you. I, I don't think that this shiny object that Democrats are praying about is going to come to fruition quite the way they see it, because it's hard to forget how expensive things are right now. Uh, Leo Terrell, thank you, as always, for getting us started.